All right. Um, I hope I assume everyone else. Everyone's back. So let's have another look at our website. So this is pretty cool, right? I think uh, in 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 a little over half an hour, we've we have headings here, we have uh, paragraphs, we have different. St well, uh, we have an image, we have li we have a link. So that, that that's pretty cool. But um, I'm sure you all agree that if there's one outstanding thing about this web page, it's how absolutely ugly it is. So, but we need to fix that. We uh, yeah, we really really need to fix that. And the way we're going to fix that is. We're going to use CSS, which is um, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets, right? Uh, I'm going to explain exactly what that is in a moment. Uh, so, I, so let's let's just get started, okay? Uh, let's go let's go to Sublime Text, and uh, let's go to this paragraph, okay? Let's go to this paragraph, and in the P tag, we're going to add an attribute, okay? We're going to add an attribute style equals uh, then we're going to open the quotes and now this is important okay you, you probably need to note this down character by character color the American spelling all right c-o-l-o-r then a colon red semicolon all right color colon red semicolon all right if you don't do this right it will almost definitely not work uh, and then yeah you close the quotes then um, Let's save that. Save and refresh, and it's red. Nice. Um, right? Did, did everyone do that? Did everyone get that? Right. So that was inline CSS. All right. Um, the idea. I mean, the idea here is that it's in the same line uh, it, 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 it's in line with this, uh, with the ta with the element with the tag that's being applied to but uh, what if I wanted all my paragraphs to be read would I do this you know just copy paste you know just copy and paste again that 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 would be a little silly that would be and again like I said you know programmers don't like to write more than they have to so so what do we do instead what we're gonna do is Inside the head, we're going to add another tag. We're going to add a style tag, all right? Open, close. Okay. And now we're going to do. Now we're going to do some really awesome stuff. Um, inside this, you're going to say p. Then we're going to open curly braces, right? You can all see that, right? Let me. I'm going to open curly braces. Uh, of course, Sublime is nice, so it closes them for us. And we're gonna press enter. Okay? So did everyone could everyone do that? Did everyone get that? Uh, inside a style tag, inside the head, remember, not inside the body, but inside the head. Uh, P space open curly braces, enter. Alright? And inside this we're gonna say color red. And we're gonna save this. Go to our page and refresh. And now you see all our paragraphs are red. The reason, okay, this stuff is not inside a paragraph tag, so it's not red. These are headings, so they're not red. This is a link, so it's not, well, that link is a little more complicated, but and this is another heading, so this is not red. But everything that is in a paragraph tag is red. So, so that's the idea, right? Uh, so basically what this is doing is this is saying, for all P tags, apply this set of rules. And in the set of rules, you have a rule which says color red. So that means everything that is, that's inside this, all the text will be red. Um, okay, now, why did I put the style in the head? Like I said, uh, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, things inside the head don't actually go on the page, right? And uh, and that's true in this case. You don't actually see these rules in the page, right? You don't see them. Sorry, you don't see them on the page, right? Uh, these are just properties that are being applied to the page. These, these set of rules are being applied to what's inside the page. Um, okay, so let me add another uh, uh, rule. Let's say h1, same curly braces, and let's give this a uh, color purple, right? Uh, I can save that. Let's go to and uh, 
we go back here and refresh. And our headings, our H1s are now purple, right? We have two, H, uh, two H1s, both of them are purple. So, is everyone caught on? If you haven't, please, please ask a facilitator. Just raise your hand, you can call any one of them. Um, all right. So, okay, and now that we, uh, all our paragraph tags are, uh, all our uh, paragraphs are red, we can remove this inline style, okay? Just go to the inline style here. Right, and just remove this attribute. This should just be a plain P now, right? Um, so that's what we saw here. We saw that CSS, well, kind of stylized it. Pretty is a bit of a stretch, but kind of stylized it. And um, what we also saw is that we can define sets of rules, both uh, in, in the header, which uh, you can just call that an embedded style sheet, or just yeah, it's just you know, it, it, it's in the head, and. Uh, you can also specify them in line. But here's the thing. Uh, so you saw one reason not to specify them in line, right? That is that you would have to type it out so many times. Uh, also, imagine if you're managing a, a big website and you have to change your styles. You have to go to every single line and change that style. That, that really doesn't make sense. So, and there are some other reasons as well, but uh, it's just good practice to avoid inline styles as far as possible. So, but, uh, I'm sure you, you, you must have, I mean, this might be going through your, through your minds. Uh, if you can't use inline styles, how do you change one particular paragraph to, 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 to a particular set of, uh, set of rules? So the way we're going to do that is we're not going to write the styles in line. Instead, we're going to identify the paragraph. So we're going to use an ID attribute, okay? So uh, say ID equals to, um, or actually, no, wait. Let, let me let, let's go. To, let's use a different paragraph for this. Uh, let's go to the paragraph where we had the link. All right. We're going to say ID equals to um, I love NYT. All right. And we're going to save that. And uh, so, does everyone have this inside the p tag uh, that's around this? Uh, that's around this link. Uh, the link pa paragraph. In that, we're going to give it an attribute, ID equals I love NYT. You can call it anything else if you like. Just remember what you called it. Um, now we're going to go up. So how do how do we select this one, right? Because so so if you want to select it, so these things are called selectors, right? Because this they sort of select the elements to which the set of rules inside will be applied. Uh, so in this case, this is how you select tags, right? Like the in the entire like like all tags are selected like this. But if you want to select an ID, you start it with a hash, right? And after that, you say, you, you, you type the name of the of the ID, okay? So I love NYT. So that's hash I love NYT, okay? Now we open braces and um, let's say you want to declare your love for the New York Times, you know, very uh, boldly maybe or. Yeah, yes, you're just really, really enthusiastic about the New York Times. That's weird, but okay. Um, so we're gonna say font size 50 pixels. Uh, PX means pixels. Uh, I won't go into details about that, but just write 50 PX. Okay, so that's font hyphen size colon 50 PX semicolon. All right. So we should save this now. So what did what did we do here? We identified a paragraph with an ID, okay, and then we said the uh, the element that has that ID should have a font size of 50 pixels, right? That's what we did, and let's see what happened. That's exactly what happened. See the see see the the, the, the link paragraph now is it is, is a lot bigger. That's that's 50 pixels in size. Okay, so that was how we. Okay, so 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 what did we learn there? That. Uh, in, incidentally, any element. So uh, what we saw here was that I named, uh, I gave an ID to a paragraph, but absolutely any element can have an ID. In HTML. So you could give a div an ID, you could give a heading an ID, you could give an image an ID. But the important thing, the, the thing to, uh, to 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 remember, the thing to take care about, to, to uh, yeah, the thing to remember is that you shouldn't repeat the same ID for two different elements. So I gave this one. Uh, I gave this paragraph an ID, I love NYT, right? I should not 
go and maybe give this paragraph the same id that's that's wrong maybe uh, if you did that your bra browser might be able to figure out something to do but uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very silly idea don't do it uh, but say you wanted to select a set of elements right so in this case you were able to select one element say you wanted to select a, a select a, a, a particular set of elements and give those elements a particular set of rules how do you do that for that we use something called a class so let's try that in fact um, let's say we want to give this paragraph a uh, class uh, so we write a, again we write an attribute class equals uh, in this case i'm going to call this uh, buff right so can we all do that give this paragraph a class buff and um, uh, maybe you can give something else the same class okay let's let, let's just put you, you remember these two lines we had here let's just put these inside another paragraph okay can we all do that just surround that with a paragraph tag and give this a class equals buff as well all right and so how do we identify a class? We identify an ID. Uh, we start an ID selector with a with a hash, and we start a class selector with a dot. Just a plain simple dot. Uh, so dot buff is what we're going to write the rules for now. Okay. And uh, I think it just makes sense for the rule to be this: font weight bold. All right. So can we all do that? That's font hyphen weight. That's the that's the rule, and we're going to set it to bold. Sorry, font hyphen weight bold is the rule. So, is everyone has everyone caught up? If anyone hasn't, please please do feel free to raise your hand and call a facilitator. They're all quite bored back there. Well, maybe not bored, but they're all quite jobless back there. Um, okay, so if we're all up to speed, we're going to refresh. And okay, you can't. It's not very, it's not that noticeable, but you can see that this one, this entire thing is bold, and this entire thing is bold as well. So what happened here was we gave the same class to both of these uh, elements, and we said that we want both of them to be bold. We want the font to be to, to be bold. So that's the idea behind a class, right? Multiple, if you want to identify a whole set of elements and you want to give them the same set of rules, you give them the same class, and you write the set of rules for the class. Hmm. So, so far what we've seen is basically what CSS is, all right? So we, we, we've seen how, we've seen sort of how CSS works, all right? We've seen, uh, yeah, we've seen how it works. But uh, let's see some more practical examples of actually using CSS now, right? But wait, before that, uh, has, uh, has everyone caught up? Again, if you haven't, please, please, please raise your hand and call a facilitator. Okay, I'm going to assume the rest of you have caught up. So let's just let's do this. Uh, you remember this big useless text paragraph? Let's give it uh, let's give it an ID. Uh, so it's useless text. So let's just call it ID equals useless text, right? Okay, can we all do that? Or yeah, feel free to call it anything else. Dummy words, stuff that means nothing. Any ID, and just save that. Um, and let's give this some styles. So, so this is. Oh, wait, wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Just hold on, hold on. Uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, no, we're not going to label this paragraph div. Uh, uh, paragraph use this text. We're going to create a div around this. Okay. You open a div before this paragraph, and close the div after this paragraph. Right. Now, this is very important. You have to, you have to open the div outside the paragraph and close. Uh, yeah, basically, the div is surrounding the paragraph, right? So you open the div before you open the paragraph, and you close the div after you close the paragraph. So is that clear? Uh, 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 does anyone have any any doubts about that? Uh, all right. So all right. Now we're going to remove this ID. Sorry, this ID was not supposed to be in the p tag. Uh, you can just cut that. Uh, space, control V or paste or whatever. So we're going to give this ID to the div. All right, this is very important. Make sure the div has the ID useless text, not the paragraph. Okay. And now we're going to identify 
we're going to write some rules for useless text. Okay. Um, so what rules do we write for that? Since it's a div, since it's, it's a division, it's essentially a box, right? Uh, maybe we want to see the, see what the box looks like. So let's do that. To do that, we're going to give it a background color, right? So background color, right? Uh, say we want the color to be yellow. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, feel free to 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 give it any other color you like. Just don't give it black, all right? Because then you won't be able to see anything inside it. Um, and don't give it white because that'd be quite pointless. Um, well, at the moment. So we're going to save this now, and we're going to go to Chrome and refresh, and it's yellow. It's a nice, disgusting yellow. Um, okay. So let's give this some padding. Say padding. Um, Twenty pixels, right? Px is pixels. And if we refresh this, see what padding did. Padding adds some space inside the div. Okay, this is important. Padding adds space inside the div. So what's done with, done is it's added 20 pixels inside the div. <coughs> now um, let's give it a margin. Let's see what margin. Okay, uh, say margin 30 pixels. Right again, 30 px. So that's margin space 30 px. And save and refresh. Wait, what? Yeah, refresh. See what margin did. Margin margin add some space around the div, right? So so we saw the padding added space inside the div. Margin added space outside the div. Mm. Now let's say let's give it a border, all right? Let's give it a border, and wh what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use a shortcut here. Typically, you would have defined different properties within the border, but we're just going to do something a little neat here. We're going to say border one px solid black, right? That means it's one pixel thick, it's solid, and it's black. Save that and refresh, and now it looks like a like a disgusting announcement on an NUS website. Yes. <laughs> so you know how they do it now. You can actually you can make you can make a horrible NUS website now. Oops, sorry. So in fact, uh, this was solid. I can actually use a different style as well. Say I want to use dotted, right? Or maybe no. Let's use dashed. Dash, right? Yeah. Save. And refresh, and you can see that now you have dashes instead of the. See that these dashes here. So that's how you do that. Um, okay, is everyone uh, is, has everyone caught up? Uh, if anyone's lagging behind again, please ask a facilitator. Okay, so. All right. Now you notice something interesting here. Uh, wherever we, we we've used colors, we've used black, yellow, purple, red. We've, we've specified them by name. Now, imagine uh, it, it, it's, it's, it sounds rather absurd. Uh, you know, to, to, to be able to name uh, that you might be able to name every single color you want to use, right? And uh, yeah, it, it is absurd. So the way you actually the way you actually fine tune your colors. Is by using something called a hex code, all right? So instead of black, we're going to write hash zero 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 zero. That's six zeros, all right? So I'm not going to go into details about this, but this is the same as black, and you're going to see that. I'm going to I'm going to click save. I'm going to refresh, and it's still the same. I can zoom into that. It's still the same black border, all right? So. I won't go into a lot of details about what this actually means, but uh, basically, this is the most precise, the, the more precise way of specifying your colors. Um, but uh, say you're actually say say you're a web designer and you're and you want to find the right color. So one thing you could do is you know you could keep on editing the text and refreshing the page, editing it, refreshing the page. That doesn't seem like a very great idea. 
So what you can do instead is you can use this amazing feature, uh, this amazing Chrome feature called the, the inspector, all right? So the way we're going to load the inspector is, um, now this depends on what version of Chrome you're using. I'm going to show you one way of doing it, then I'll tell you the other ways. So you click this, this button and you go to tools and developer tools, all right? Uh, on some versions of Chrome, this might be under view developer. It depends on what version you're using. Um, so has everyone got this? If anyone hasn't got this, please please ask right now. Yeah, I mean, just, just raise your hand if, if you don't have this right now. OK, great. Um, so this is really cool, right? Because what you're seeing here is actually the same text that you have up here. And if you highlight something, say I, say I, hover, I hover over this H1, then it actually highlights the, 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 that heading. If I hover, hover over H2, it actually highlights the H2. And uh, so this is one of the really cool things about uh, the inspector. But it's even better than this. Uh, you can actually edit the stuff that's inside this. So in fact, let's go to the New York Times website and do something interesting. Um, so you can actually open the inspector here. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Um, you can open the, open the inspector here. And now what we can use is we can use, you see this magnifying glass here, right? At the bottom here. Can everyone see my cursor? The magnifying glass down here. Just click on that. And now just select one of these elements. Say you select this element, OK? Uh, just hover over the link and select that, OK? Mm. Now what you see is that Chrome has automatically highlighted the element that uh, uh, highlighted the code for that element, all right? And now uh, just double click on this, and uh, you can actually change this. So just I, I just press backspace, and this is a headline, all right? If I do that and I press enter, there you go. I defaced New York Times, right? That's awesome. No, I didn't. Uh, please, this this is not yeah. You, uh, if, if you just refresh it and, and it won't be like that anymore, right? So this is not actually, uh, you're not actually changing the website, you're just changing what it looks like on your browser. So yeah, this is not hacking in, yeah, in, in, in huge air quotes. Um, so let's, let's, let's maybe try another thing. Let's, on our own page, maybe we want to change this color. Uh, maybe this, uh, this yellow is a little too horrible. So click on the magnifying glass again and select this div, right? Just, just uh, in this yellow area. Click on this and see it selected the div. Now, something interesting, you can see something interesting here. On the right, what you have is you have the CSS rules that apply to this div, okay? And here's the awesome part. You can actually change these rules. So say we don't like yellow and I think there's a general consensus that yellow isn't good. So, so you click on that and maybe I want it to be white. Enter, and it's white. Cool, right? Uh, and there's one more thing, uh, one pretty cool thing that's happening here. So when you hover over this uh, div, uh, uh, when you hover over the code here, what you see is that you, you see these the, the, these three uh, uh, like sort of concentric sort of rectangles, right? And and they're in different colors, and there's actually a reason behind that. So you see the orangish part right, uh, outside. That's actually your margin. That's actually the area around your div in this case, right? The green part is actually a, is actually the padding. So that's uh, you remember we added a rule for padding. So that's that's where that comes from. And the blue stuff is well everything inside the div. So that's pretty cool. That uh, so so you can actually in fact uh, if Chrome will show you sizes for things and stuff like that. So you can really uh, this, is, this is an excellent way to, way to continuously fix and continuously observe what's going on uh, on your page. So all right, let's just close that for a moment. Um, all right, now, so we've seen so far that CSS lets you do some really cool stuff, right? But uh, it's probably not a great idea for me to list everything that CSS can do because that will take longer than this entire workshop. So that's that's just, yeah, that's a bad idea. So instead of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a, a pretty cool resource from which you can learn rules. You can learn uh, new CSS stuff. So what I want you to do is I want you to open a new tab 
and just Google MDN, all right? So that's MDN. And this gives you, the first link is to Mozilla, to the Mozilla Developer Network, right? Let's just click on that. Let's wait for SSE's Wi-Fi. All right, and this is a beautiful website. Not just in the sense that you know it looks beautiful, but also the resources it gives you are amazing. So if you want to know anything about HTML, anything about about the uh, the sort of newer HTML5, anything about CSS, JavaScript, if you want to know really pretty much anything for uh, for web, uh, related to web development, you can actually find it on MDN. So that well, that's that's one great way to learn. And the other great way to learn, of course, is to use the inspector right so like i showed you just go to wait where is it go to tools developer tools and um, you know if you say say, say I, I like i like this particular shade of blue i'm going to click on it and here i can see the color right and i can copy the color if i can see it of, of, of course i can copy it right so yeah that's pretty cool so so these are two great ways to learn you can go to MDN or you can copy. So different things work for different people. So just go ahead and try out, try, try both. Um, now, in fact, actually, uh, so I just showed you MDN. Some of you might have heard of this website called w3schools.com. Then if you heard of it, maybe some of you took some tutorials on it. Yeah, don't do that. See, here's the thing about that website. It sucks. Basically, it sucks. It's it's a terrible, terrible website. If you want to see why it's a terrible website, I'll show you something pretty cool. There's a this thing called w3fools.com. <laughs> yeah, this will this will kind of show you what that is. That's all right. I'm not going to wait for it to load, but yeah, w3fools.com will tell you why not to use that website. Um, anyway, so let's do something else. Um, so let's let's maybe stylize our link a little bit. Um, so maybe we can give a maybe we can stylize all links on this page, okay? So we say a. We're back in our style sheet here, right? We say a. Um, let's say color green, right? Let's just do that. Save and refresh. Oh wait, what the f why why am I refreshing New York Times? Uh, refresh our page, and it's green, right? pretty cool but uh, I'm pretty sure you've noticed on some uh, websites if you hover over a link it, it, it usually looks it, it, it will sometimes look a little different right maybe uh, maybe it turns a different color maybe it, it maybe 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 you see it underlined or maybe you know it blows up in size that'd be a very weird thing to do but maybe someone could do that um, so here's how you do that we're gonna say a colon hover right can we all do that? That's A colon hover. And maybe say when we hover over it, we want the color to be red. Right? Uh, let's save that. Refresh. Okay, right now it's green, right? And when we hover over it, it's red. Full stuff. Um, and maybe we can actually add something for a visited link as well. Okay, so again, it's A colon visited all right open braces and say we want to give it a color black maybe a visited link looks black save refresh it's black why is it black because we've already visited it all right so so what we're doing here is we're adding so see what so css basically allows you to add states to selectors this is, so this, this is a new concept here. So this selector, for example, the selector A can have a state hover. It can have a state visited. So this is this is actually very uh, a really cool way to way to stylize your your page. And um, you can actually add some. So for example, the hover state can uh, you you can add that to a div. You can add that to you can add that to quite a few things. But it's not a great idea to add it. Uh, well, I don't know if, if it's a great idea, but people don't usually add it to divs. Usually, people restrict it to links or maybe images, right? So, 
Right, so CSS states, cool stuff. Now, uh, say okay. Let, let, let's 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 add a link inside our inside uh, inside this div, right? This this useless text div. Let's let's add inside this paragraph. Let's add a link. Maybe um, a and close a around the first word, right? Lorem. Can we all do that? And let's say href href equals um, let's say google.com all right that's yeah when you think of any uh, yeah that's the first website that comes to mind um, right and we're going to save this and refresh and it's a link it behaves like uh, uh, like links behave uh, typically on our uh, on our page for some of you this might be black that's that perfectly all right so for example even when i when i wait when i click on it yeah when i clicked on it it turned black right that's that's all right that's because it's supposed to be visited but uh, say i wanted to give a different style to a link to to all links inside useless text right but i already have a style a uh, for uh, i already have a style for most links but i want to say that all links inside useless text have a particular style so here's the way to do that so css can actually let you do this so this is this is this is pretty cool so i'm going to say useless text space a right you all following that that's useless text dot useless text space a and then we're going to open the oh, what there? then we're going to open the curly braces and uh, maybe we want links inside yeah. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's my bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be. A, it's supposed to be a hash. My bad. Good one. Um, okay. Yeah, it's 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 hash useless text. So it's hash useless text space a, and then we're going to open the open curly braces, and maybe we want uh, uh, maybe maybe we want this link to be. What do you want it to be? Purple? And save and refresh. And it's purple. Okay, this is hard to observe, but yeah, it's purple. See that? It looks purple to everyone, right? Okay. So that's pretty cool. Um, the fact that CSS can let you do that actually enables a lot of really cool stuff which uh, i'm not going to cover i'm not going to not going to go in depth about uh, uh, regarding that stuff but uh, but yeah that's a pretty powerful feature so okay uh, i think i've covered quite a bit of css right now let's let's uh, let's do something really cool okay let, let let's see a really awesome example um, so uh, like I said, right? You can copy styles. So some websites actually make it a lot easier for you to copy styles. So go, so open a new page and go to CSS3 Gen. CSS3Gen.com. That's CSS3Gen.com, right? And then that's CSS3Gen.com. And so this is actually a pretty cool website. Let me, I'm going to let it load. So, and we're going to go, we're going to go to this example. Okay, it has a lot of cool examples. We're going to go to this one, box shadow. Can we all do that? Just click on box shadow. All right? Does everyone everyone have this page? If anyone is having trouble, please raise your hand and just call a facilitator. All right. So. This is a really cool page, right? Because what you can do here is you can actually use these sliders to sort of look at different shade styles, uh, uh, different shadow styles. You know, maybe I want the sh my shadow to be a little further from the box. Maybe I want it to be a little more blurred. Uh, maybe I want it to be green. It looks horrible, but okay. Maybe I want it to be, no, wait, okay. let's make it blue, all right? So, all right, maybe maybe I like this particular box. So what can I do? How can I add this box to my to my, uh, to my my page? The way I can do this is by copying these styles here. You see that? So they, they automatically change the style. So in fact, if you want, if you just maybe, if you're, 
can you see that this, the stuff inside that box is changing the, the this, this stuff is changing right so maybe I like it like this and uh, so I can copy these styles just select them and copy and let's go back to sublime text and uh, so I had useless text was my was my div here right so yeah maybe I want to add this set of styles to my div so I paste them here oh. okay and we're going to save this and we're going to remember you have to copy all three styles right and refresh there it is that's the same shadow the same shadow effect is now on my page so this is a really cool thing and they have a lot of other examples you can try those examples but uh, I want you to notice one thing uh, you see there's a there's a box shadow there's a webkit box shadow and there's a moz box shadow uh, and the values are, are the same in each one now this is kind of ugly and uh, well the reason behind this is that mm, most browsers mm, you can attribute it to, to competition between browsers or whatever you want to attribute it to but many browsers don't follow standards uh, the, the same way right they don't uh, follow them precisely the same way so they have they, they, they have their own style so uh, you can go into specifics uh, some other time maybe you can look up the specifics but uh, uh, but that's the idea behind this. So usually that will happen, particularly when you're using CSS3. When you're using CSS3 styles, you'll probably find uh, find this thing. Uh, th this will probably be, be quite a common thing. So, all right. So 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 we've covered quite a bit of CSS. We've covered a little bit of CSS3. Uh, we've seen how we can use uh, MDN or you know just inspect elements to to uh, to learn new stuff. And um, let's take a break now. Let's take a uh, yeah. Uh, right, so yeah, yeah. Uh, no, the, it, it, it's a div. So okay, so 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 in fact, uh, CSS does have uh, uh, different different priorities for different rules, and that's actually the reason why it's called cascading style sheets. Uh, the specifics of those are a little hard to understand, and uh, well, I myself don't fully understand them, and. Uh, but okay, for, for a functional purpose, you, you you can know some some things like uh, uh, like an inline style will have greater priority than uh, will have priority over uh, an embedded style, and uh, the things like that. I don't think there's uh, the, the, the I should go into the specifics here, but uh, you you can always look that up. Um, so okay, so we've covered quite a, quite quite a few things right now, and let's take a break. Let's take a five minute break or a ten minute break. How long? Uh, let's take ten minutes. And uh, when we come back, we're going to make our own page, our own personal web page, and that's going to look really cool. So, yeah, go ahead, take a break.